Hi, Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 3. Uh, this episode, we're going to combine three things. The love of clocks, Benjamin Franklin, and first in flight. History and science combination. Uh, so what this is leading to, this is leading to the first time that man has ever taken off from the surface of the Earth. And it involves Benjamin Franklin in Paris when he's the official, unofficial ambassador to the United States to win armaments and monetary awards so we could help defeat the British. And in doing so, Franklin is a hobnobber. He, he meets all the great scientists and it's, it's his passion, it's his hobby, so to speak. So he befriends um, a pair of brothers named the Montgolfier brothers. The Montgolfier brothers are Joseph and Etienne, and they are involved in their family has been for 500 years in the paper making industry in France, making some of the best paper for all the, the best, uh, or the monarchs in the world, and the uh, laid papers, classic laid papers, everything by hand that's, that involves with, you know, mashing rags up and, and then uh, making, making the, the, some of the great papers that we've ever seen in the history of the world. But this still continues. But Franklin befriends them, and at the end is an inventor, and Joseph is an engineer. And Franklin enjoyed the, the art of paper making and would uh, frequently have uh, dinner over at Etienne's house. And uh, uh, they remarked one night, uh, at least Joseph did, about uh, his wife was doing laundry and during the process of dinner in front of, of a wide hearth fireplace. And they had their shirts, these blossom shirts, these huge shirts with a huge... Uh, you know, the huge sleeves and arms, and, and it was sitting on a, a hangers in front of the fireplace, and the whole shirt was moving and shifting in front of the fireplace with the hot air going in it. And uh, Joseph, the, uh, the engineer, got very inspired, and he said, uh, you know, uh, I, I wonder if this could fly. And, and they did a lot of testing with the shirt in the fireplace. They, they, they undid the shirt from the hanger, and the shirt went up just a tad bit, and it came back down. They tied off the top and did experimentation like that. So this led to brainstorming between the three, Franklin and the two brothers. So hence in around 17, uh, 1782, um, what they did was they started doing experiments um, using making small globes out of paper because they're in the paper making industry and lighting a small fire underneath and they let the globes go and the globes would go up in the air. So that inspired them. So let's uh, maybe possibly man could actually take off. So that what this is moving toward is first in flight, first in flight, 18th century. This is not the Wright brothers first in flight. And I think some, uh, some of us are led to believe that through uh, elementary school. Um, not directly, but it kind of, that's, that's what I was led to believe. So first in flight here is the first time man has taken off from the surface of the earth. So what occurred was the brothers kept uh, experimenting. They eventually built a large balloon out of paper 35 feet in diameter. Imagine 35 feet in diameter, and with the bottom of the balloon coming down, it was some 60, 65 feet. And uh, they sent the balloon up and, uh, you know, it was unmanned. It had a basket. And what they did was they put straw and wool on the bottom of it. And the balloon actually caught fire. So, you know. Really, I mean, it's something you would imagine at that point. But the balloon caught fire while it was up, and it landed in a nearby village. So just imagine, in 1782, a balloon coming out of, something coming out of the sky and landing in a village in rural France. Um, you had all the Frenchmen, they were beating the balloon with sticks and, and trying to kill what they would have thought. They had no idea what this thing was. So back to the... Uh, Back to the drawing board. So the Montgolfier brothers, assisted by Benjamin Franklin while he's there in his free time, um, so they came up with a, a balloon which would have a cloth lined with cotton canvas on both sides and paper in between. And they actually called on uh, uh, a man called uh, Revelé, and it would actually become the cosmetics company, Revlon. So Revlon, be Revelé became Revlon, 200 and some years later, and you know, we have cosmetics for women, but Revelé or Revlon was a wallpaper manufacturer. And um, they were making wallpaper uh, for the king and for the affluent people in France at the time. So they brought him on to actually decorate this balloon. So we're gonna take a quick look at the balloon. Um, 
And this is a, a, actually a drawing by Benjamin Franklin. Okay? And all the decoration, the king, the sun king, Louis XVI, we're talking here, his insignia and the crossed double L's, reversed double L's, and all of this decoration was done by Revlon. And, uh, or his company, which was called Revlon in the time. So the wallpaper manufacturer came over to decorate the Montgolfier's balloon and uh, the rendition by Mr. Franklin. So the only way we know this had occurred is uh, we found out only about 30 years ago that Benjamin Franklin was the only one that we found notes that day. So he was able to uh, sit on a balcony of one of the Montgolfier brothers. They had an apartment in Paris around the 11th arrondissement. And how I tie into this, very interesting, how I dovetail into this, is I was an apprentice to a gilding, uh, one of the top gilders in Paris for two years, back in the early 2000s. I would go through this great courtyard door uh, with, with the doors 18 inches thick of wood, uh, 14 feet high that the king's carriage could come through and see what the artisans were working on. I would have my gilding apprenticeship through there five nights a week. There was a plaque that I would pass every day and it said on this point above this plaque is where Benjamin Franklin sat and watched first in flight by the Montgolfier brothers. And uh, that just amazed me and just it took my mind in many directions that Franklin, Benjamin Franklin actually stood here or sat up here on the balcony. So, uh, obviously, when this word got of this failed attempt of the paper balloon by the Montgolfier brothers, and uh, in addition to Louis XVI, did not want a manned affair, a manned flight, a manned liftoff, because he didn't want to be blamed that if two or one or three individuals were killed, if the basket, if the flight didn't work. So he said, okay, we want to put animals. But this caused kind of a hysteria. And you had a lot of inventor types in the Age of Enlightenment, the 18th century. And remember, man was contemplating going up in balloons since the 15th century. Uh, so we had another inventor named Rosier. He was a physician in Paris, one of the lead physicians of, uh, he was a lead surgeon. So he was an inventor. So he sold a failed attempt of the Montgolfier brothers. He had a lot of money. He was well healed. And he had some people build a balloon for him. Unfortunately, he was the next to go up. So the Montgolfier brothers did not get the first in flight, first man. But prior to that, their next flight, because Louis said that no human beings could go in the balloon, he said, but you can put animals in the balloon. So they put a sheep, a duck, and a cock in the balloon. And they sent them up. And they went up about 900 feet and went three miles. And they had a basket down below, and they, they set a brazier fire going on with straw and with wool. And it was tethered, and this thing was just pulling at the tethers. And they released the tethers, and the animals went up. And it went up 900 feet and went three miles to the next village and landed in the woods. And people were running and following it. When they, they landed, they found that the, the animals were still alive. And uh, they pulled the animals out, and it was a national day of the, the hero. For the animals were the heroes. So from that point on, the history of aeronautics changed. The history of man leaving Earth changed. Every airplane, every other balloon that's ever gone up was because of the Montgolfier brothers first in flight. And the reason we know this about this flight and the next succeeding flights for are Rosier and the Montgolfier brothers was because of the Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Franklin sitting on the balcony, he was writing down, he wrote down what the people were wearing, how many people were there to watch, their reaction as it lifted off, the smoke, the, the atmosphere, everything about that day. He drew the balloon as I just showed you in the book. And that information somehow found its way to the Greenwich Maritime Museum in, in England. And it was unearthed about 20 years ago. Now it's there under lock and key and proper t t conditions uh, for anyone to see if you're interested. And, but it tells exactly what happened in First in Flight with the Montgolfier brothers. So we'll finish the story up. So there was the physician. He was the next. He had his balloon ready in line right after the animal balloon for the Montgolfier brothers. He didn't ask the king's permission. He, he went up on the balloon himself. He went up again about uh, eight, 900 feet, and he, he went a couple miles, and he landed, and he was fine. So Rosier, Monsieur Rosier was the first man to go up, a physician in French 
uh, in France to uh, be the first man to leave the earth in a, in a flying machine or a sailing machine. So literally about a month later, the Montgolfier's balloon that I just showed you, it had all that uh, ornamentation by Monsieur Revelon, all the, the king's gold. It was, it, it had 20 pounds of gold, gold powder, and gold dust decorated that balloon. And the Montgolfier brothers finally went up in their own balloon. And Franklin also observed that and he wrote about that and it's in the ledgers in the uh, National Maritime Museum in England. And so how does this tie into me? Other than thinking this is very interesting, very important stuff to, for everyone to know out there. So I've been a Franklin aficionado for many years. Uh, written or have read many books about him. Um, a great believer in, in Benjamin Franklin, what he did here with a revolution in America and in as far as science goes. So uh, I was in Paris. I went back to Paris to do a quick apprenticeship in uh, 2007. And uh, I heard that this is, was Franklin's 300th birthday. I heard there was the four, four museums in Paris, and two of those museums were the Art de Métier and the, the uh, Musée Carnavalet. They were the two major museums, but four museums, two of the smaller ones got together, and they put together a walking tour, um, a walking tour, everything Franklin. So they put 25% of each of the four museums' floor space about the doctor, Benjamin Franklin, his 300th birthday. And the interesting thing was, here in America, the Benjamin uh, the Franklin Institute and other uh, things associated with Franklin had nothing to do with this. No great association with, with celebrations of Franklin's 300. So how sad is that for us to be in America? But yet the French did it up in a big way. So I started at the Arts and Metier, and they had some of Franklin's uh, measuring instruments of when he was coming back from France of a seven-year stay, measuring the Gulf Stream. And when you think about Franklin, his measurements of the Gulf Stream um, are what planes follow today coming in Europe back to the States. So I worked my way in this, this tour. The tour took actually two full days. It was well planned out. And uh, I pulled into the uh, Musée de Carnavalet, and I'm talking to a curator, and uh, a curator that I met many years ago while I was this student at the Louvre in Paris. And uh, she said, I have something particularly may interest you. I have some engravings, some metal plates. They were about 9, 10, 12 inches, uh, 9 by 12, something like that. And they were engraved metal plates that they would actually, that pamphleteers would use. So they would, they would coat them with an ink, and they would stamp them onto paper, and they would hand out or sell these pages. Oh, look what Franklin did, or look what the McGolfier brothers did. So they had this wonderful plate, and I'm looking at, and I can't believe my eyes, I'm looking at a plate of Benjamin Franklin with a huge clock under his arm. And now I've seen 10,000 tall case clocks because I'm a horologist. I've done this for the last 30 years. And the clock case, the tall case was very specific. It was huge. Franklin could hardly get his arm and carry it. So it was proportioned to his body. And I'm looking, I'm looking, getting very stimulated and saying, you know what? I've seen this clock before. And I'm a clock collector. I have 150 tall case clocks. So the first time I was very eager to get out of Paris and get back to my studio. Um, I was in there for another five days, but when I got back, I rushed to the clock collection, and some of my collection has been, remained untouched. Some of it needs to be restored. So keep in mind, some of the clocks were five deep against the wall. And here I found it back against the wall, a clock I purchased oh, about 12 years prior. Forgot all about it. To me, it appeared very heavy and big at the time. But something struck me about the clock that Franklin was carrying. In the center of the clock, just below the mid door, in an oval, a horizontal oval, was a beautifully carved M. It wasn't a carved in size M, carved in relief into the wood. It was an, an embossed part of the, the, the fabric of that clock case that was relieved with the M standing proud, almost like little conical seashells about a half inch long. The half inch seashells actually made this huge M. And I've seen the M of the Montgolfier brothers on their balloons, on their letterhead, and dealing with Benjamin Franklin in the past. So at last, conferring with the museum coordinator after I got back from Paris, sending her many photographs, actually doing imprints of cast of the M on the front of the clock, they confirmed that Franklin 
in fact, she told me the story when I was there, had two clocks made in commemoration of first in flight for the Montgolfier brothers. And this was done in the 11th arrondissement. A cabinet maker made these clock cases, and I actually have one. So this is the revelation here. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, I've had much communication in the last 15 years with the, uh, with the musée. Um, uh, prior to discovering this, and then since then, um, so we've made we made the direct correlation that this is one of the cases. They do not know where the other case is, um, so they have um, great desire to have this case in the end, and it will be presented to them. So, uh, in this episode, this is a great lead up, uh, a tie up. We're going to be looking at the clock case after you've all had the story. Now, the clock case of Benjamin Franklin. Uh, one of them who gave what she gave to the Montgolfier brothers for recognition of first in flight. So um, glad you're joining us. And uh, we're going to start out by taking a look at the clock mechanism. So Franklin chose a very, one of the key clock makers of the period in Paris to make a three train clock mechanism for his, uh, his special clock cases for his friends. So let's get started. <laughs> 